Hello everyone. This is the um, bag we're going to be making today. This one here. I did the sides. Normally I would do the sides the same as the edge, but I wanted I did them in a different colour so it would make it really clear for you guys what we were doing during the video. So yeah, that's the one we're going to be making today. It's exactly the same as this one. You just position your beads slightly differently and pull your front bit further down and add two instead of one. But yeah, I'm going to show you how to do that. Today you're going to need size 11 Odelicas, uh, size 10 and maybe a size 12 beading needle as well for going through those 15s when we go down the side here. Um, could be handy. Um, so 10 and possibly a 12 beading needle. Some Delicas in a few different colours, maybe 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 or 7, 5, however many colours you want. I'll explain that at the beginning and um, a few 15 OC beads, um, three millimeter pearl and some thread of your choice. I used six pound fire line. Um, yeah, I think that's everything. Scissors obviously, bead mat and all the obvious stuff. Um, don't think there's anything else you need. No, Delicas, 15 O's. Oh, mine are all Mayuki, by the way, and yep, the pearls I've used are Swarovski pearls, but you can use any glass pearl. Um, yep, that's it. I'll get your materials together, I'll clear my table, and let's get started. I'm really excited about these handbags, I absolutely love them. And I love this colour, it's just gorgeous. Sorry guys, let's get started anyway. Aren't they so cute? Okay, you're going to start with this on your needle, two of your end colour, then three of your first colour, and then one of your stripes, three, one, three, one, three, one, so up two. So you've got 19 beads there. I'm going to run those down to your stop bead. Oh, I haven't got a stop bead on, hang on. Let me just quickly add that. long tail much longer than that. Um, yeah, you want a really long tail to be honest. Okay, so we're going to pick up one of our end, end um, colour. This is the first one, go through the next bead. your first colour all the way up. So every other bead. Bring up this one, miss that one, and go through that one. I'm assuming most of you who are um, doing this know Paiuti stitch, but if you don't, hopefully you'll be able to follow. And then another one of your first colour. And you're going to do this all the way up. Nice and tight and they should pop into place like so.
excuse me. Next Saturday. Oh no, there's a plane going over. It's going to be noisy. Right, your work should now look like that. I'm waiting for this plane. I'm going to take one of our end colour. This one's here at the end. And like we did with the book, because it's odd count, so I'm that bead. So it's side by side, and then I want to go down this one here. You can do it in one down that one as well. that one and try and yeah, got both like that at an angle so now coming out of there and we're going to go up here which is where our trail is coming out of down this way and flip the work like so and I'm going to pick up one of our edge colours Second colour, mine's green. That's in there. Then one edge colour. One green. And then back to the edge. So obviously, it's the colour you have on your edge. And then flip our work. One edge. And this row is going to be all green until we get to the top because our edge beads are sticky, sticky out beads that we're going to go through so we don't need to add one for this row because every other row we'll be adding these strips. So it's going to be green all the way up. So, 
and always pull in that direction, you know, the direction your, your thread's meant to be going and your beads are sitting this way, so pull your thread that way when you pull tight like that. If you pull this way, you pull them out of place, pull it that way. So green until you get to this bead, and that last green there, and I'll meet you when you get back to here. So your work should look like this. We're going to add that edge bead on the add odd count turn. So we're going to go through two there. Pop that one into place, like so. We're going to go up this one. Didn't get up for the other one, that's all right, do them one at a time. Coming up this one, go up to that next one. So hard, and you put it at arm's length. I think someone's starting a lawn now, now. so I might have to finish this later. And then back down that one, like so. Should look like that. So turn your work over, add your edge colour to your edge. Right, so we've almost got the little green shape there we want. So one more green. This row is going to be edged because we want it to match all the way down. Just remember to put in your edge beads there, like so. And then another green. Another edge colour. creature landing on me. And another green. Another edge. Another green. And your edge colour. I'm going to flip around and your colour on your edge. And then I'm going to do a row, just one row of this colour here. in between rows it's just sort of a beige beigey colour just going to do that one all the way down so there'll be a row of this in between each row of colours now. Sounds like the fish splashing in the pond. I can hear them. So I'm peering over to that corner because the colour I want is over there, sorry. Just all the way down in that colour. Sort of a neutral colour, beige, or you can do whatever colour you want on that, you know, in the in-between. <coughs> you can use one of the colours you're using in here, or a complete different colour, or... And add your end from here, so up through that one. that 
one. This one in the wrong place because my mat's there. And then back down through that one. Which is your odd, sorry, your odd turn. And your work should now look like that. I'm going to add my next colour. So you've got to your edge first. So you're going to have a row of these little flower colours, a neutral row, and then another row of flowers, and a neutral row, and another row of flowers. Then I mean, it's going to look like. So what colour we should we do next? We would do. I think we'll do the bright orange. So I'm going to do one bright orange. It's a different colour. And now we want to add our rows here. Because it's a drop in row. So I've got that one. And your edge colour. Oh, I've changed colour. And my life have gone into auto mode. Not that colour. I've gone the wrong orange, haven't I? So I'm meant to be adding these ones now. Right, the bright orange. And the edge. All the way down. traffic on the road as well though which isn't so nice but the birds are lovely right so when you've done that it should look like that make your edge and flick your work another edge And this time, we're going to do orange all the way down. Because we're going to be going through our, our line here. Because it's sticking out this time. So orange, or whichever colours you're using. Because you can do this in any colour you like. I just thought, because I don't have all the exact same colours for the other one I did. What I should have done should have done was made this one on film because I had enough to do one more and then I ran out so yeah never mind this colour is lovely anyway so yeah orange all the way to the end until you get to here obviously and then you're going to add your edge bead meet me back there you should now have what looks like that and then add your end bead on your Old turn. And you can get through both. Coming up this one, jump across to that one, and up. No, I've only gone through one, it doesn't matter, it's fine. And then up through that one. And then back down through that one. Oh. I think these colours are actually working really well. I'm liking that. So yeah, we should now have what looks like that. Put your edge bead. And then we're going to complete this little flower unit like that one. And 
and back to putting our stripe. Doing these again. So every other row we're doing that stripe, don't forget. Orange, my edge colour on my stripe, my orange, and back to the edge. Edge. Like so, and then back to a row of my neutral, which was the beige, if you remember. So we're going to do beige all the way up, just one row. tiny gap between the colours so they're not all touching to each other back to back. Um, make them kind of blend, gives it that sort of carpet bag look. It certainly does on the browns and the beiges and all the, those colours. And then we're going to turn on the odd Turn. Right up. Turn. If you can get up both. Yep. Excellent. Up both of them. Down the one. Don't tangle your tail and flick your work. It should now look like that. And then we're going to start on the next colour. So going to be one edge, and this time I'm going to do my sort of khaki colour, kind of Halloween-y looking, so I'm gonna, it's not going to show very well until, whoops, and then one of your stripe, don't forget to do your stripe, don't get carried away, there we go, doing our stripe again. One of your next colour, whatever it may be. That's red in the way, whatever it may be. And I'm going to have to change thread to this, I've only got a short thread, so I can show you how to change thread as well. But you may need to add thread in your project, so I'll add thread on this one. So, not everybody needs to know, because some people already know how to do that, but some of you don't, so... Well, oh, beginner. Well, I've missed a bead. I've actually missed a bead. What the hell am I doing? That's what you get for talking, you see. Chatterboxing. Just undo it. Sorry, guys, I'm telling you totally wrong. If you're following me, just think I've gone crazy. Right, there you go. In your third colour. In your stripe. All the way down. And this basically is it all the way through. This is all you're going to do. You're just going to keep repeating all the way through. So I might do one more while with you and then I'll leave you and to meet me at the other end. Um, we'll measure and see how many rows you need. And then I'll let you know. So you're going to go up there and and your work should look like that now edge your edge our stripes already sticking out look we want to complete that so we're going to add the two of your third color 
all the way down that row and meet me when you get back to the other end of the row you're adding all the same colour. So finish that row. You can hardly distinguish can you that neutral row. You can hardly see it. So let your work and your edge bead. Colour, whichever it may be, your third colour, almost like a khaki colour, and one of your striped colours all the way down. And do that all the way to the edge. Okay, so we finished the end of that row. Then we pick up an edge, and then all the way down a row of our neutral colour. Well I call it a neutral colour, it's the um it's like a very pale beige. And that's all you're gonna do all the way. So once you've got going on your pattern it's yeah your row of your little colours, your row of your neutral your row of your next colour, row of your neutral, and the row of your next colour, the row of your neutral. And you're going to go like that all the way to the end. Remembering to do your lines in between. So carry on like that in the pattern all the way. Um, I'll just let you know how, how long you have to do that for. I'll go and measure it and have a look how long it has to be. Oh, I don't need to go away, I've got my tape measure right here, look. It needs to be about five centimetres, there you go. So carry on like that for five centimetres and then meet me back there when yours reaches five. That's what this one is, look. So... Screen, no, we're not. Son, I can't see what I'm doing. Five, make it five centimeters long. And maybe when you get back to there, oh, I actually love these colors. I really like that. Okay, yeah, carry on until you reach your five centimeters. And uh, meet me when you get back there. Another one of the hazards of beading outside, the wind has just caught and blown my bees all over the place. Look, they're all mixed together. For goodness sake, now I've got to separate them all. <sighs> Not to mention all the noise. I should be glad when the cabin is finished and I will have somewhere to bead. Have a cadabra. Tidy. Um, I just want to show you what I meant. So it's really hard to see on this one. So you've got your first couple of rows, then you've got your rows that make up your flower shape, which is three rows, then you have one row of that neutral colour look, and then your three rows of your next little flower, then that row of the neutral colour. And then another three, look. And then that neutral row. You mustn't forget your neutral row. And then the three of the flower. See how it goes? And I've added another colour. I just found that really nice dark. Excuse the state of my hands. I've just been underneath my car having a look. It's making funny noises. Um, yeah, so on this one... This is my, what I called a neutral row on this one, because it kind of looks neutral. But on this one, I did green. So that neutral row is your green row. So you can see much better, that would be the beginning and that would be the end. This is the beginning. So I started that one off without the 
line to the end. So that's my initial row, then my flower row, three rows of flowers, and then that one neutral row for in this case it's not neutral, it sort of pops against the flowers, it stands out. And then I've done a row of it in the in the monk. So you really can mix it up. This one, which was the original one, so I've used that sort of a beigey colour again. Um, it's not focusing very well, is it? There you go. Yeah, in between my rows I've used that. Can you see that little neutral row here? It's essential that you do that neutral row because if you don't you end up with, well so it'll end up like that as being two at the bottom one in the middle and two at the top instead of a flower. So that row in between is what makes it stay as a nice little flower shape except on that row where I've done four of my neutral colour and again I did four of the neutral colour there and four of the neutral colour there so or three rows sorry three so that was a bit of a mixture but to get the flower thing effect you have to put that row in between your rows of flowers so it's much clearer on that one because I did it in green it's in a complete different colour just don't forget that. that neutral row in between or you will get this effect instead of the flower shape. Okay, so I'll point that out and just let you know that I'm adding another colour because I found these ones. Where are they? They are. I just thought they were lovely. Some metallic -y bronze or something. But they'd go really nice because it's such autumn colours. So yeah, very autumnal I thought. Not just Halloween, -y, it's very autumn. So those ones on the edge as well and in the middle are lovely, they're like a weird shiny orange colour as well. Gorgeous. So we've got a few oranges and greens and some brown. So yeah, you don't have to add only four colours, you could add five colours. Or even more, you could do every row a different colour if you wanted to. Um, I just thought that brown would go nice, very autumn -y. So yes, carry on until you are at your appropriate length, which will be five centimetres. And once you get to your five centimetres, meet me back here. I just thought I'd make that a bit clearer about the that, um, neutral row, as I call it. Because it's not one row neutral, one row flower, it's one row of neutral. And then three rows to make the little flowers. So yeah. Anyway, I think you should get the idea from that. I hope that's explained properly. Um, yeah, sorry about my hands. I did just... My car made some horrific noise, so it just becomes a need to see what, what's wrong with it. But anyway, yes. See you when you get back to the end of those rows, and I'll show you what to do next. Okay, I'm at that point now where I had to need to add a new thread. I've already added one new thread back here because I'm using all my little scraps of thread up. I quite often have, you know, quite substantial lengths of thread left over from projects so I like to save them and use them up on these small projects so I'm gonna show you how I lose my thread and how I add a new thread so at the moment I'm coming out of here so you also make want to make sure you remember which side you're coming out of so I like to end on my tail side so I know for sure I need to be coming out of here so what I'm gonna do is I am going to jump across at an angle like so. And when you've got um, peyote stitch with these tiny size 11 delicas, um, sorry, just move that out of the way. You really don't need to tie any knots if you just do this method. And then up a bit further, just a couple more like so. And then 
going to change direction, so now I'm going to go down through this one. And then we're coming out here, I'm going to go down these two at an angle, like so. And back up from side to side like that and then up this way at an angle. Now if you're making a piece of jewellery it's probably going to get more you know daily usage and lots of movement and all the rest of it you probably want to do quite a bit of this weaving backwards and forwards but for something like this that is perfectly sufficient that'll do so either get your thread zap out or your scissors cut off that thread and that's definitely not going to come undone that's nice and secure and then we're going to add our new thread in exactly the same way um do i want that this piece i could use this one hang on so i've got lots of loose bits here and bits where i've you know started practicing a project or something like that on so we use these bits of thread up sorry bear with me for a second i've already used that one so what's the end that's been flattened is it that end or is it that end because you don't forget to flatten your ends with your pliers because they won't get a round thread through a flat hole so I'm going to thread my needle, she said, like so, and then new thread, like I said this isn't very long, don't worry that bit of thread will work its way in and if it doesn't we can burn that off later. So right, we're going to start somewhere over here. I'm actually starting a lighter colour. Start somewhere here. Pull our thread through. And uh, just leave a tiny bit sticking out. And then I'm actually going to go back down that one. Like so. Then I'm going to go down at an angle. That. And at the moment you can see it will, you can move it, look, once you've done that woven through a few times you will not be able to move that thread and it definitely won't be coming out. So I'm going to go up this one, which is jumping from side to side and then up at an angle through a few of those beads in this direction. Through. Yep. Gone through a couple of those as well. <clears throat> I'm just going to carry on in that way. Following your thread path so it doesn't, you know, make any. And then I'm going to go back down beside this one. going nowhere it's already tight so then I'm going to weave my way back across down round down round down until I'm coming back out of where I left off which is this bead so work your way down across you know until you get back to here you'll figure it out it's not that hard okay so I've come across here across to here up here down here out there and then back up here so depending on where you added your thread is, you know, where you'll... But make sure you follow the thread path, either jumping from one to another and at angles like that. So that you don't have any thread showing and it doesn't affect your pattern or look wonky on your work. So that's how you change threads. 
add a new one and get rid of an old one. And if you do have a tiny bit, you can, if you've got a thread dapper, you can use your thread dapper to get rid of that. Or it will eventually, probably by the time you've finished your project, work its way in between the beads. And if not, you can always give it a little burn and melt it. So right, we're going to carry on with our pattern until you reach your five centimetres. Um, yeah, I'm on a neutral row and yeah, I've added that lovely, lovely uh, dark brown. I wished I'd have found that earlier and I would have put it up here as well. I might have even replace the brown with this colour, but anyway, yeah, you carry on until your work reaches your your um five centimeters we're not far off now look we've only got that much to go so almost at the five centimeters so when you get to your five centimeters meet me back here so yeah that's how we change the thread anything else i wanted to know all right carry on until you've reached five centimeters you can do any combination you know it doesn't have to be the same as mine that's that's yeah use your creative uh license there and add whatever colors in whatever combination you like um obviously if you want it to come out exactly like that the first one which is a bit like what i would call a carpet bag and obviously you want those colors that blend you know or if you want it to come out more like that then you want those colors that pop against each other and really stand off so yeah carry on meet you back here when you get to your five centimeters okay your work should now look like this and we're now going to add the sides and the clasps And uh, the handle. So just turn that up. Like so. And then the other one. I'm not quite as straight because I cracked a bead on the outside and had to um, replace a bead. So it's a bit wonky, but it's not too bad. So yeah, and where your beads end up, so this one looks a bit taller, look. Depends on where you fold your bag, you know, so you can fold it so it comes further down or Fold it so it stays further up. Just as long as you leave a little bit of, make sure you're leaving, accounting for the fact that it's going to be slightly wider as to where you're going to put your beads. So I think I counted that I wanted mine nine beads down. So then I'll make a marker. Nine beads down like so. No, I think it needs to be more than nine. You want about I don't know, one, two, three, four. Yeah. So you want not including your top piece one, two, three, four. Your rows showing so you want it about there. So like that, yeah about there, so you're talking from the top here, one, two, on the inside that is, not the outside, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, mm. I still want it to go further I reckon. there 
go over here. So I'm going to do mine. One, just count the outside row. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, or ten. So either 9 or 10 beads down, that's going to be your first edge and then you want the beads to be, so maybe you take a spare needle and you want it to go three across, so or possibly I'm going to actually go and one there. So you've got one on each side and two in between. So that's going to be the bottom of your bag like so. So once you've marked it you know where you're going to be going on the other side as well. So yeah I want mine about there. It's going to fold like that. So I do those markers like that and then we're going to set that to one side and we're going to make the side piece before we join it on so once you've marked out where you want it to be set that to one side so count it down i think it's 10 beads i've counted down nine or ten so set that to one side and then I left my needle attached to my work, so sorry about that. So now I'm going to pick up one, two, three, four, five, six. Just want to cut the side colour, the side of it to be the same colour as this. I could do it a different colour. It might actually be easier if you'd see what I'm doing if I did it in the orange. I think I'll do it in the orange just so you can see what I'm doing. This is going to make it so much easier. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's just check. No, I've got seven. Six beads. And then I'm just. Do I need that tail or not? No. I'm going to go back up three of the beads, like that, and then pull them down, hopefully so they're set side by side like that, we will just put this out of the way. I'm just going to go back up and down a couple of times to reinforce. Make it nice and tight like that. Oops, sorry, miles away. Nice and tight. And then I'm going to go back down one more time just so I'm away from that tail thread. And down. And then all I'm going to do is keep adding three at a time. One, two, three. And then I'm going to sort of ladder stitch it across all the way. And down that one. And pull. It should just sit in place nicely, like so. And then back up the next one. Like so, and that's all there is to it, all the way along. So one, two, three, each time. And coming out of here, the top, so we'll just go in the bottom. Now that was my dog. And then back down the beads we added, and up. We can do that till we've got nine four there, this will be five, 
five are coming out the bottom, go down the top. Just a simple up and down, up and down. Three. Three. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then we want three more, three more rows. And meet me back here. Okay, once you've got nine rows, you need to take your piece of work, that being the inside bit, that being the bit that goes over the top. The inside bit starts with this odd four. It's not quite a flower look, it's different shapes to the others. And that's the outside. So I've got my markers here. So I'm gonna take my piece where the thread is coming out of this edge. So I want that edge where the thread's coming out of to sit next to this piece here. It's gonna go along here. So it's gonna sit in there like so that's going to be my side all the way up like that so i want this bottom piece with the thread coming out to match up with that needle there and what we're going to do is take our needle we're going to go up through the marker take out your marker obviously and go up from the inside of this bead here. So you've got your two outer rows, not the inner one, the outer one. Go through that. Hang on a minute, let's just count again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm gonna go ten. And that's the tenth bead there. Yeah. So I'm going to go through there, look. And pull. And your little piece should come and sit here. Like so. Okay. And then we're going to go back down the next bead. In fact, should we do the bottom first? No, we'll go back down the next bead. And then when we come out with that bead, we're going to go into the next bead on our little piece of work, into that one there. And just go down one bead and back. Can you see? Like that. And pull. And if this needle gets in your way, you can move it. You know how many you've got to count in that direction afterwards, but I like to just leave it there as a marker. I'm leaving it slightly loose. And then I'm going to go up this next bead. I'm coming up this one. I'm going to go up that one. Like so. And then I'm going to go onto the inside of the next bead along from the one that thread's coming out. Can you see the thread coming out? So just moving along from one edge bead to the next, like so. And then pull those ones a little bit tight. It's actually going to sit like that. So it's going to be slightly away from your edge and you won't see any thread coming out anywhere. So we're going to go back down the next one. And this is where I cracked my bead on that white one. I really tried to force it at an angle and um, crack the bead. So be careful not to do that. So we're coming out of this top one and then we're going to go along the next one in our row. Hopefully you can see all of that. Sorry I didn't mean to turn it around and confuse you. And then coming up this one, back up that one. 
and in through the inside of this one. Can you see where I'm going? Just going all the way up like that. And make sure they pop. You know, your threads do pop, you have to pull them tight at some point. So that no thread shows. And then back down the next one. And in through your next bead. If you do accidentally go through two, oh, there you go, I've just done that. I had a feeling I might. If you accidentally go through two, it doesn't matter as long as you go back up two. You don't want any thread showing, so I've actually gone down two here, so I'm going to go back up two. I've tried to go down one, but if I accidentally go through two, I do. It's not a problem. And then through that one. your next bead. Oh, that's right. And down the next one. Am I in frame? Shoot, sorry. Down that one. Down the next one. And if it won't go, let it go through two because you don't want to break a bead. And that's exactly what happened to me last time on the white handbag so if it wants to go down two let it go don't try and force it where you might snap that bead so it's just a case of back and forth up and down those beads going exactly opposite to where so I'm on the inside of that one like so and then oh shoot I've done that one wrong so I Got thread showing now, why? Yeah, I've only gone back up. What? Look, that's what I've done. See, if you go around on, on the wrong amount, that's exactly what's going to happen. So I'm going to have to thread that back out. That one. I hope I haven't sewn through the thread, or that's going to be awkward. And the map doesn't want to sew through that bit either. Well, this could happen to you, so as I see if that will come back through. If not, I'm going to have to take the needle off. Oh no, it's come back through. So yeah, I'm coming through two, so I'm going to go back through two. Otherwise, you get thread showing exactly like what you just saw me do. So I go up that one and that one this time. Yeah, basically however many you go through, go back through the same amount. You see there now the thread just disappears. And then you want to come back through the opposite bead, which is that one. There you go. Like so. And don't worry about this thread, we'll get rid of that in a minute. And I'm going to go up that one. Sorry. Down that one. Down that one. And hopefully through this row here. Don't want to break any beads. It starts to get stiff once you join it together. Where am I? Oh no, I'm coming through this one, so I don't want to go down that yet. I want to... Let's just pop this so you can see. It sits like that, look. So that's how that weaves together. Now we've got to go back to the bottom, join that bottom piece, and join the other side in exactly the same way. So what I need to do now is get my thread back through here. So, what I'll actually do is come down this one. Right, can you see where I am? I'm coming up with this one here. So I'm going to go at an angle down the one below it, like so. And then I'm going to go up under the one beside that. It's a bit hard to see where I'm going, but 
the one beside it and hopefully through both coming through that top bead yep through those two beads there so I've gone gone down through here across here jumped beside it which I know is hard for you to see and gone up through that one and out through here just so that I can get back down oh where am I I'm not coming out I'm coming out there actually I want to be coming out there what am I talking about sorry just ignore everything I just said to you I want to come down here through this bead and then through the next one beside it but not the one above it I'm going to come out here exactly where I'm coming out actually and then I'm going to poke that through between those two beads not up them between them and come up behind this row here I know this looks awfully difficult but it's not it really isn't as hard as it looks come up between there once you get the hang of it Right, so I'm coming back out that side of the bead that I want to be. She's back out the inside of this bead next to this one. And I'm going to go through. Probably could have done that some easier way. Through here. I want to really get back to the bottom, so... I'm trying to go through all three of these beads. I keep missing it. There we go. Through those. Like so. And I'm going to weave all the way back down through those beads. And that will give it a bit more, strengthen it a bit more too. Make it nice and straight. So hard at arm's length. Like that. I'm being careful not to go through any of these threads. Oh, the sun's coming on us now. It's going to be really hard to see. I'll move out the sun. It moves across real quick when you're outside. Start off in the shade and yeah, suddenly it creeps on you. And that's all the dogs starting now. Right, so we're going to go back down. And this time, don't go down to your last corner bead. So that's already attached here. Well, you could do it, actually, you could just strengthen it one more time, couldn't you? No, don't. Just, just come out here. Oh no, I mean the middle bead. Come out the middle bead. So yeah, work your way back down, and then come out the middle bead. And then what we're going to do is fold around the corner. Like so. Dispense with our markers. Right, so I'm coming out this middle one. It's a little bit fiddly. <laughs> right, so you're coming up that one. And you've got that one attached to this corner one here. So you want two more beads at the bottom. Like so. So, this is the one we're attached to. We want one, two. So we want this bead here. We're not going to go on the inside of it though. I mean the outside of it. We're going to go on the inside. Right, so we're attached to this one. We want one, two. Mark it. So it's that one there. And you want to go up that one there. And that's going to secure your middle to this bead here. bottom and then we go back up that next bead like so
And then again from the inside, we're going to go back inside that same bead. And that will attach to the middle bead then. So, this fiddly. Back inside this one here. This one. Which is your middle one. And now that's attached from both sides to that bottom bead there. And you come back out to that one again. Up the same bead on the bottom. Like so. Oh, that dog is always barking. So annoying. Like that. So now you have, that's your middle one. Like so. And then you go down your next bead. So, and that's going to go, oh is it, no hang on, get that bead in place and put it nice and tight, Let's see where is that corner going to sit, it's going to be that bead, right we want it to sit on that bead if we can, that next one there, Let's put it in the next bead beside the one we're coming out of, So glistening in the sunlight, you can't see what I'm doing. I might have to move out of the sun. I hope you guys can see what I'm doing. That's we're going in that one. And this time pull it all the way through before you go into your next bead. Because this one's gonna go in there. I'm actually gonna take it all the way across. beads if I can let's go through two at a time two first all right that's your corner and then through the other one going all the way down just this is just to give it a bit of reinforcement so it sits nice and straight in that edge like so and then I'm going to go and get in there, back up that bead on the edge. The corner one that this is attached to, which I believe is that one. Just don't crack a bead. No, I'm not going to get down there. All right, fair enough. What I'll do is I'll just go back down this next row. I don't want to crack a bead again. It's only to reinforce it anyway, so just to keep that lot, that bottom line that you've done sort of straight, give it something to, that's it, that'll be better anyway, like that. Put it down through there. All right, so that's nice and straight now. That one's attached to that one. And then you just go through the one next to it, the next one along from the bead you're going through, like so. And then just do what you did on the other side. So, Back down the bead beside it, like so, and then in through that next one along on this side. Right, let's get it up through first, put it through, and then go up here. Trying to go through too many beads at once is probably how I cracked my needle, I mean my bead on the white bag, so maybe just do it separately like that each time. And down through this one. I mean, you can adapt any of these methods and, you know, give it your own twist. It's fiddly, I'll give it that. Jeez. Doesn't want to go in there. There we go. Up through that one. And then give that other one a pull tight there. And then go through the one beside the one that your needle's coming out, your thread's coming out of, like so. Let's 
Is that that one? Which ones are coming out of? It's coming out of that one. I'm going to go up that one. Like so. And pull. You see how that's now coming together. And then down the next one. See on the inside there. And then up that very next bead. One if you can. I think no, I've got two. It doesn't matter. We just need to go back down two like we did the first time on the first row. Those two, and then the one beside the one that's got the thread coming out. Like so, and we're almost there. Down through that one. Just keep going like that till you get to the end. Up through. Just don't want to go through just one. It's going to be two. Yeah. Just doesn't want to go. And then we've got to go back down to just fiddly. I'm gonna get it. Just got it nice and tight, it doesn't want to go in. But you do really want it nice and tight. So you don't want it all wonky. Okay, and we're in. And then back up your next bead. Like so. And then down. Put one beside it. We are almost there now. Down the next row of beads. If it's hard to get in, then take some nice tight stitching. But try not to break any beads. Alright, we've come down two, so we're going to go back up two. And that's your last one. Up through that last edge bead. Oops. Like so. last one and this is where your tail thread's coming out so we can get rid of that as well and I'm actually going to tie that in a knot because you're not going to see that so we do a knot there like so and through again it's a surgeon's knot so just do the single knot and then through twice I haven't got my pliers so I'm going to have to tighten that with my pliers so my dodgy fingers and then you're going to weave this thread in so get rid of this thread so we're coming out of that one there we go on this one hopefully I'll pull the knot inside my work Done. Don't want 
fed through there though, do they? That's it. Well, it's not coming inside, but... I'll poke that in in a minute, so if it sits inside that bead. And then, yes, this thread we'll weave in through our work. Like we did going through that one, so we're going to go down at an angle. Make sure you follow that thread path when you do this. And if it feels tight in any of your beads, just go in a different direction. You do not want to snap a bead at this stage. And then I'm going to turn it around and go back up that way. So if you follow the thread path, weaving your thread in and out, you don't really need to do a knot. Um, and then I'm going to go back down that way and across. Like so. And yeah, weave that across as far as you want. Um, so you feel your work is secure. And then that's your side piece there. I might actually get undo that knot because it's too big. And you can see the thread there. So I'm going to make it a bit smaller so it pops inside. Maybe just do one knot instead of the two. I'll sort that out in a sec anyway. Yeah, weave your thread in, up and down, up and down until you've think you've got sufficient and, and cut that okay, off. So I've threaded my piece through and cut it off and I managed to unpick that knot with the needle and I've worked it through and I did a knot right in here in th the thread bridge and popped the knot inside here so then I can cut that one off like that and then straighten up my work and that should just sit nicely pop into place and put one one even a bit too far in. So just pop it with your straighten it up and there you go that's one side of your bag finished and then it will fold over like so. So you need to go into ahead and do the other side in exactly the same way. Um, looks pretty good, doesn't it? Quite neat. So you want to go across to your other side. Make sure where you've attached your corner beads, you come through on the other side in exactly the same place. Weave up another one of those rows and do exactly the same thing. Start here, work your way down, join your bottom, work your way up and up. We come back to you when you've done that. Just do it exactly the same as we did this one. Um, you can always rewind and watch this bit again to do that one. It's exactly the same. Start here, work your way on the inside all the way down to the bottom to get to your right spot, or work your way from the bottom up rather. You could, yeah. You may as well do the second one. You could work either way, whichever way you want to do it, because you could work from the top down and then go across and up without having to take off your thread and go back down the bottom. But it, whichever way you want to do it, just do it the same this side and I'll meet you back when you finish that and we'll do the handle and the clasps. I went ahead and decided to start from the top this time so that I could um, easy find my way around the bottom without having to you know restitch down the sides like we did on the first side. So yeah just stitch down the all the way down this side and like I say you can add from the top or the bottom it's up to you I started from the top this time I just thought yeah it'd be easier to go around the corner afterwards so just whiz down the sides like that back down the next one exactly the same as we did for the first one this side just keep going like that till you get to the bottom and then instead of having to work our way back down 
we start from the top, we can just go around that corner all in one. Whoops. So yeah, I mean, the more you develop your skills, the more confident you get, you can start, you know, maybe you'll develop your own technique that you find easier than mine. Um, I tend to wing it with things, make it up as I go along, change it, adapt it, develop it. You know, it sort of changes from time to time when I make things because once you've made something a couple of times, you sometimes dawns on you there could have been an easier way or, you know, like going down this way this time. I think this is definitely going to be the easier option because you're going to get to the bottom and then you can just follow around the corner. So. It's going to be much easier. I'm just whizzing ahead. If you uh, can't keep up, go back and watch what we did the first with the first row because this is exactly the same. Just obviously I'm doing it a little bit faster um, for the sake of video time because it's going to get they get awfully long. If, if you do the whole thing on on film, the video gets real long. So oh gosh, that's tight. I don't want to snap a bead. Not at the last minute. Right, that's perfect. Then we're going to go around the corner. Down through that one. And don't worry if your bag doesn't sit flat after you put the first one. It will pop into shape once the second one's in there, you know. It'll all fall into place. And then I'm going to go in through that bead there. Like, just like I did the first time, so just keep going round. Um, I'll weave this thread in afterwards and this thread in afterwards. I'll just weave them up and down. This one and this one. So if you've got any tails, don't do the knot because it will show. Thankfully I've got that other one out. There's no knot at all now. So yeah, weave your tail ends in afterwards. And yeah, just keep going round like we did the first time. Um, that was your corner, and we're going to go through the next bead, so just following around. Yeah, um, I think I've been beading about seven years now, so when I was first beading here, yeah, I didn't have this confidence that I have now. Um, now I just experiment and try things and you know, make it up as I go along sometimes. I think I'm going to go down that next bead. So I'll just do that one once. Yeah, I think I will. The other one I did twice, but I'm just going to do this one once. I think they'll hold fine. It's not like it's actually going to be a handbag full of the kitchen sink and all your junk, isn't it? It's um, ornamental. So, and then that one go up that one like so and that's that corner yep perfect and then this one if I can get it in there come on in we go that's it and then up there well oh, that's tight maybe try as um Try changing to a size 12 beading needle if your work does get tight, just uh, don't want you snapping any beads like I did on my first one, or the white one rather. I'll show you at the end. Oh, goodness me, that bit's fiddly. Right, up that next bead, and yeah, and then just keep going like that all the way up doing exactly what we did the last time. So down through that one. I should have put my tail threads, got rid of my tail threads in advance, shouldn't I? Get them out of the way, but I don't like to do that, just never know. So, and then, is that going the right one? Yeah, and that next one there. Yeah, just keep going like this, like we did on the first side, until you get to the other end. Okay, so I've completed both sides. And 
I've come through the, at the second one. Instead of cutting this thread off, I'm going to work my way through. Where's that come from? I've come across from there. I can see some thread somewhere here. Oh no, that's the tail there. Right. So what I want to do is I want to go coming up this one here. I want to go down that one. I'm just gonna zigzag across now. Zigzag that little bit is a tail that I've cut off after I've knotted it so I can just burn that or it'll slip in. See that little bit of thread, that's probably just going to slip into the work anyway so it'll be fine. So yeah we've done both sides, my needle was coming out the top here so I am working my way up and down. Go through two, not three, two there. Working my way across the edges there. And you can do this bag in either. You can either have, like I say, the two clasps or one. Obviously, because we're on video and don't want this to take forever, I'm going to do one. see where it comes to I want it to be about this bead here so one two three three more down from where I am <clears throat> so I shall weave up that way cross that way Oops, sorry, I've gone out of frame. Sorry, I'm just weaving, following the thread path down towards where I want my little bead to be for my clasp. So, without having to add a thread, I think I want it to be coming out of here. I think so. So yeah, just weave your... And if you don't have enough thread left, and you've finished your side to weave across you have to add a thread in the way I showed you before and weave across to when where you need your clasp to be so when it to be about there because I want to count for my hoop coming through it I can tighten that bead up in a minute no maybe I want it there yeah I want it in that next bead I'm gonna jump across one can I do that yeah Jump across to there. Where are we? We're there. And that's where I'm going to add my bead for my clasp. See there? Sorry if I went out of frame there. I was only weaving the thread across to come out where I want to come out. You'll have to measure yours to see where do you want your bead. You want it slightly below where your top is. So I'm going to use my 3mm bead. And I'm going to take a 15-0 seed bead. I'm going to go back down through the pearl. And then I'm going to go through the other side of that delica that I'm coming out of, like so. Put that all into place. Make sure your 15-0 sits nicely on the top. Like so. And then we're going to go back up that and reinforce our work. So back up through your three millimetre. Back through your 15. That didn't go through, did it? So tiny. So tiny through the 15. <clears throat> Excuse me, my throat's getting dry. I think I need a drink. Back down through your pearl back 
catching on your sorry get caught up on my other beads back through your pearl like so back through your delica and contrary to the rules I just told you we're gonna put a knot here I mean you can go through this three times or as many times as your needle will go through but considering you're going through a 15 at the top do be careful not to snap your beads um, nice tight knot there just to be sure it's secure and then I'm gonna go back and weave in the same way I did before to get rid of my tail Oh, yeah, it's gone through a few, it's good. And then back down this way, leaving my tail end in and following that thread path. Sorry, it's a bit noisy, I can hear all my neighbours rattling bins and all sorts of stuff. At least there's no chainsaws or lawnmowers today, which is good. Right, and then cut that off. Like so. So that's your clasp. And then we're going to add the other bit of the clasp. Which is why I said to keep your tail thread. I've, I've started weaving mine through, look. That was my tail thread hanging out of here. So we're going to weave it through in the same way, up and down, until you get to the middle. I'm going to have to put a thread on mine. A needle, I mean. I think I might have to squish my thread again if it won't go through. Oh, it's gone through. Right. Just threaded that. So yeah, I'm going to carry on down to the middle. Through that one. Up through that one. Yeah. That one. Let's see. Up that one. Oh, I got that one. And that one, and then up the middle, like so. There we go. And then you're going to pick up ten of your fifteen OC beads. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten. Ten of your size 15 oh. They're really tiny, aren't they? So ten of those. And then we're coming up this side. We go back through that bead on the other side. And again, you might want to change at this point to a size 12 beading needle so that you can go through these a good few times depending on what needles you have as well um, quite often I can get through my 15Os two or three times with these size 10s I use the I don't think I've got a packet here John James beading needles they're English beading needles um, so I find they're quite fine that's why I really like them because you can get, you know, get through the 15Os more than once. <coughs> Some of the size 10 beading needles I find, they just won't go through. So you have to um, change to a size 12. As you can see, this one goes through with ease. So you want to go through your 15Os two to three times. I'm just going to do it twice, so I can just stay on camera, then I don't have to 
jumping off and then refilming. Right through those 15 O's. Oh, she said with ease, that's getting a bit stiff. But yeah, these usually can go through twice at least. Um, it's not like it's a piece of jewellery and you're going to be undoing it and doing it up constantly or you know, have massive pressure on it like you would if you were wearing a piece of jewellery. So I think twice is fine anyway. And then when you get back to the end, do a little knot through that thread there at the bottom, making sure you don't catch those beads. Make sure it comes right there. Make a little knot there. And then through your Delica one more time. I'm going to do a knot the other side. Some on the other side, do another little knot. I lost my thread, and then that's that bit done. And then we're going to weave our tail end away. I'm going to go up there and across. Let's see if I can get down to. Yep. And then down the one beside it. Pull that thread in. And then across at an angle. And so on, keep doing that, one beside it, across at an angle, one beside it, across at an angle, up and down, until you feel like your thread is secure. Once you've done that, you have your little clasp. All we've got left now is to do the handle and that's at the bottom you just give it a little flatten so it will should stand up there you go one little bag right i'm gonna dash off for a quick tea break and then i will be back and we will make the handle and if you got this far well done i hope it's all been clear um yeah <laughs> i'm not an expert and i do tend to wing it a little bit as i go along you know, I find new new technique and then I sort of adapt it and change it and, you know, try and sometimes I'm, I'm sort of change it as I'm going along. So I hope that was easy enough to follow. It really isn't as hard as it looks. It's a little bit fiddly, but it's, it's actually quite simple. Once you get the hang of it, have a little practice and uh, see how you get on. Right, I'll be back after a coffee and we will do that handle together. Okay, so we're back. I've just decided to go ahead and do the handle the same way as I did the other bags otherwise this is going to take forever because I haven't actually had time to experiment with the herringbone handle but I will do what I'll probably do is make another bag and then when I get to the handle part of the bag I'll video it and I'll put up just a tutorial on just that handle um, so you can see how to make the, ha the, the other handle without well that was good wasn't it and I'm rubbish and not there and tangled all my thread up. This is what happens when I talk every time. Let's just, just start that bit again. I'm not going to rewind and edit it all out because then I've got to say everything again and I forget what I've said. So yeah, um, herringbone handle. Yeah, I'll do a separate video on alternative handle. But maybe I'll do two, you know, maybe I'll try a couple of different type of handles and just do a hand, you know, an alternative handle video. So I'm doing through the thread bridge, a little knot here. And this one isn't gonna show because it's gonna pop up inside our beads. So yeah, don't tangle up your knot like I just did. Just a knot without a tangle, which I don't seem to be able to get my head around right now. It's the wind as well, it's not really helping. Oh my goodness, what am I doing? Right, let's see. There we go, let's do it this way. There you go. You see? <laughs> I can be such a plonker sometimes. Right, 
Finally, we got there. It's just a simple knot, you would think, wouldn't you? Alright, it's because I'm talking and I can't focus and talk. Okay, so I'm going to do a separate video on how to do your... In fact, I'll pull that knot in afterwards. The knot's going to be... After I've gone up and round, I'll pull it that way and pop it in, you'll see anyway. So what I'm going to do <coughs> is I'll crack on with this. I'm going to add five of my 15 OC beads. And these are the 15s. See how tiny they are. So I'm going to add five of those. One, two, three, four, five. And then I'm going to add an orange. And then I'm going to start adding the colour I want for my actual handle. Well, I don't know. It's probably about 25 or 30 beads, so let's count. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and then see how that looks, so yeah, 20 is not enough, want another few at least, so let's try one, two, three, four, Some off. Right, let's have a look. That's going to come to there. Is that going to be too many? Mm. No, that's fine. Right, then you want another orange or whichever colour you know you're going to pick. Sorry, I've gone off screen. I? So I've got all those now measure it and make sure you know that it's going to sit right for your bag I'm thinking that's going to be fine then another orange like so and then another five of your 15 o's one two three four five so another five of those so you've got all that. That's what you should have. So coming up that side. I'm going to go onto the other side. Go down through these beads. Don't worry if you squash your bag a bit while you're doing all this, you will pull all your beads but it's fine you can pop them all back into place later and straighten things out so that's coming up like that now we're coming up this side we're going to add five of our 15 o's one two three four five like so and coming up here just going to go back up through the orange whoops coming up here I'm going to go back up through just the orange and then all these delicas again and see how that's going to just join that up there like that. And then go all the way up your handle. I mean, you could use pearls, tiny two millimetre pearls. You could use regular seed beads because I think they might sit nicer than the delicas. I don't know, I really like the idea of the herringbone um, handle, but I haven't actually tried it out, so I don't want to go and get halfway through the video and then realise, well, it's too bulky or it doesn't look right or, you know, whatever, and I need to work out how I'm going to attach it. And so I don't really just want to wing it, wing it on film and have a disaster or anything like that. So we'll stick with this one, because I know how I'm doing this one. So you've gone up that side. All the way back round through your delicas and out that side. Then you're going to pick up another five of your seed beads 
So yeah, we'll do the alternative strap. Five video as a separate thing, and I'll, you know, that would be quite cool actually, just doing that, I think. And we go back through all these beads, like so. And pull that nice and tight. And you can, if you want to, go back up and reinforce that one more time. But I don't really see that that's going to be necessary because it's not like it's an actual handbag and you're going to be carrying all your gear around in it. Let's just make sure that sits straight. Why is that not going in? It is in. Okay. Right then. Sorry. Losing my marbles there. Alright, so then we're gonna get rid of our tail. So we're just gonna I'm gonna go down one row. Oh, I don't know. No, I think I'm gonna go the other way. No, I'm not. I'm gonna do the knot here and then take it down inside the beads. In fact, we could do a little knot at the edge here, couldn't we? Where we're coming out of around the edge of the handle. We'll do the first knot there. In fact, that's what I'll do. I'll do a knot here. And what I'm going to do is take up back up the handle and knot because I don't want to risk breaking any of those beads. back through your beads along here you might have issues breaking things so I'm going to go up through this one and just keep going through the handle and doing a few knots as I go and go up through there so you can choose you can weave through this bit tie some tie some knots through the thread bridges or you can weave up your handle tie some knots as you go and do it like that and meet me when you've got ready Okay, so I've done three knots already. I'll do one more, that make my total four knots throughout the bag. Down through a couple of the 15 O's not inside and then cut your thread and at this point any loose threads that you need to weave in I'll weave that one in later off camera and then you can put something inside your bag if you want to to, to get it to hold its shape and at the, this point if any of your beads have been squashed and crushed you can just take your scissors push against them, straighten everything up a little bit. Just like so. Sometimes while you're working on it, you'll find that you do squash them a bit. Just straighten them up like that. And like that. And if you want to, you can use like Let's get it out of this other one. Just, I've just used a um, folded up little piece of uh, kitchen towel there. Pop it inside. And that will help hold your shape. Take back up. So that helps to have fingernails. Take your bag back up. And voila. One tiny weeny little handbag. There we go. Enjoy.
So that's that one. And yeah, like I say, if you want to do the other one, you could just position your beads, you know, sort of further up or down so that your, your thing comes further over, your top comes further over. So you can do it either way. I mean, if anybody does want a tutorial on, on not, you know, doing this one, I mean, it's exactly the same. It really is exactly the same. You just position your beads differently for how far you want this bit to come over. So that's all there is to it. So that is our bag, complete and finished. And if you have made it all the way to the end with me, well done, fantastic. I'm gonna give one of these handbags away, I think. I have to do another giveaway. I keep saying I'm gonna do it and then not actually getting it done. I said, didn't I, one of the handbags or one of the, um, Whatever else did I say? I can't even remember. I know I said one of the cupcakes because I've got that on the table. Was it a book? Did I say maybe give away a book? I can't remember. But yeah, definitely give away one of these. That's all my little, what I've got left of handbags. So this one, we could do the same technique. Whereas instead of going through the front of these bees like I did on the video, you can drop that behind those beads like we did on this one maybe i'll do redo this video with the sides done differently so it's going to be easier and it was ages ago when i was first first making videos for my channel that i did that so it's probably a really crappy video i don't know but yeah okay so well done guys if you've got to the end thank you so much for watching i hope you like it um do hit the like button, leave me a comment. It will really helps my videos get into the algorithms and helps my channel. So if you can help by hitting the like button, subscribe to the channel. And if you do want to enter the giveaway, which is gonna be the next video up, you need to be a subscriber. So my video and my giveaways are for my subscribers. So if you haven't subscribed yet, do subscribe. Doesn't matter if you're a new subscriber, you're still welcome to join the giveaway. It really doesn't matter how long you've been on the channel, whether you're new, whether you've been here for a while, um, yeah, that's going to be the next video I'll put up is that and I might do some videos for beginners Gabby for you um, It was Gabby wasn't it Gabby hmm. I get so many messages uh, Was it Gabby? Yeah, I think it was Gabby anyway if your name's not Gabby, I'll have to do, I'll have to correct that in the next video. But yeah, so I'm going to put up a bit more, few more beginners tutorials as well. Um, there'll be a giveaway coming, and yes, hit that like and subscribe. So there you go, everybody. That's the miniature handbag. Oh, and if anybody does want to contribute to the channel, um, I do have a PayPal link on my channel homepage and an Amazon wish list uh, link, which everything in there will be for projects that I want to do for YouTube. Um, but there's no obligation, of course. Just hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. That's the biggest help you can give me. So thanks a lot. Have a great day, everyone. Happy beading. Stay inspired. Stay creative. And I will see you all very soon. Take care. Have a fabulous day. Bye, everybody.